Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Z Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come down to see a dear friend of mine and talented craftswoman, Deborah Schnabley Morell. Deborah, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm happy to be here in my plot. <laughs> this is her allotment uh, here in London and it's an absolutely beautiful day, a beautiful allotment. Now, if you're not familiar with Deborah, she has appeared many times on my channel previously. Videos ranging from detailed tutorials on spoon carving to spoon carving decoration techniques and so forth. Now, what we want to do in this video is actually expand upon something that we covered in the very first video I filmed with Deborah some time ago. And that video was how to carve an eating spoon. And in that video, we've done a segment where we talked about a variety of woods that Deborah has carved with and has a lot of experience with. It's something I mentioned then, and I'll also mention again, in that Deborah is one of the makers that I know that has probably carved with some of the most varieties of different woods and species. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna be doing a couple of things. We're gonna be looking at an array of spoons that Deborah's already carved. And what we're gonna do, our focus is more about the wood itself, okay? In terms of experiences that Deborah has had with it, some pros, some cons, and things to kind of look out for. Now, needless to say, we're talking in the context of spoon carving, but really this kind of extrapolate this into a myriad of things that you want to carve with that, with that respective wood. So once again, spoon carving is kind of our focus in this video, but yeah, just kind of take that information and kind of assume it's going to have an impact on anything else that you may carve. So what we're going to do first, we're going to look, like I said, at a variety of spoons that Deborah's carved, and then we're going to look at some actual raw wood itself and talk through that and some of the inherent qualities that are contained within those woods. A couple of things to mention before we kind of get cracking with this video. Number one, I'm going to put a link below to all of the previous videos that I've filmed with Deborah. We've covered some very detailed videos on the entire spoon carving process, from carving a standard eating spoon to carving a pocket spoon. And also we've done some detailed videos on different aspects of decoration, okay, with green wood. So I'm gonna put links below to all of those. I highly recommend you check those out if you haven't done so already. And needless to say, I'm gonna put a link below to Deborah's website and her Instagram down below. And if you get any uh, value from this video whatsoever, highly recommend you also check those links out. So Deborah, would you kind permission? Shall we get started? Let's get started, yeah. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video where Deborah Schnabley Morell is going to be talking about different varieties of wood for spoon carving and green woodworking. So Deborah, we've got a small selection here of your finished spoons. Uh, where would you like to begin? I think I'm going to begin with my favourite wood of the moment. Um, and it's quite rarely found. And um, it's this wood here, which is Arbutus, which is the strawberry tree. Um, I think I've got another bit somewhere. Anyway, I'll find it in a minute. Um, it's a shrubby tree which is indigenous to the west coast of Ireland, Spain and Portugal, I think. And it's grown as an ornamental in, in gardens. It's multi-stemmed and it has fantastically close grain. It's very, very hard and probably when it's um, green, it, it is manageable. When it's actually hard and dry, it's very, very difficult. I quite like carving dry wood, but um, I have my limits too, but this I've carved green and dry. So this one has been baked and this one has just been oiled, but it has this incredible grain on it. It's really very, very beautiful. And I've got um, Mark Codling um, from Dor Dorset to thank for this. He brought a few pieces to um, the bowl gathering and I, I codged a few and a few other people got some and everybody thought it was wonderful. So those, I think, they've got, you know, obviously, oh, there's another one. That's also the same. So you can see that the variety in one piece is, is very different. Obviously, it depends which bit of the branch, how big the branch is. I, ha I got a few pieces, actually. Um, this one is, has got a very small bowl like that because it developed some splits on the end, so I had to shorten the bowl. So it's actually turned into quite a nice shape. So. That, I think that is my favourite wood at the moment. And then just recently I cut down in my garden something called Pittisporum. Um, is it called Tenufolium or something like that? Um, which is another garden shrubby tree, um, a three-stemmed like, like the Arbutus. 
and very, very hard. This one has been recently oiled. It's been lightly baked, but you can see this lovely grain pattern here. It's very nice to carve, but it has a habit of when you, when it's drying, if you're carving it green, when it's drying, it starts going dirty, a bit like Holly does. And so that's why I baked it. But I think I might try and discover another, oh, I found a crack. Um, I'll discover another way of dealing with that, like putting it in um, lemon juice or something like that. But anyway, that's another, we'll, we'll see a bit of the, the fresh wood. Um, this one, Mystery, um, it's a resinous wood. I just absolutely love this. I mean, it was just on, on my wood pile at home and I just thought by the bark, it's obviously some kind of cypress. Don't know how it got there, but it probably some wood that was brought here by Ryan Best, um, our wood supplier, wonderful wood supplier. It is, I think it's a cypress of some kind, but it will have been taken from a garden and it's hard to identify them. Um, but I've carved it into a feather spoon with a ridge along the middle of the handle so you get this lovely grain pattern and, and this beautiful circular pattern here. So, you know, if you cut it correctly, you can actually replicate this kind of thing. I mean, for years I didn't know how to do this. I thought, oh God, that's a mystery, I'll never know. But I've, I've cracked it. So that, that's another favourite. Um, this is an unusual wood, Swamp Cypress. Um, what I like about all these is they have this fantastic satin quality to them. Um, they're all very kind of, they're not brittle hard, they're kind of almost like malleable hard and when you take the knife across them it's almost like it's burnishing it as you knife, as you use the knife, which is rather wonderful. So it's a beautiful silky finish which is not, obviously it's not, um, sanded or anything, it's just a knife finish and then it's been burnished and I've um, put some walnut oil on it. So that's a pretty good little spoon, I'm quite happy with that one and I'm very sorry I haven't got any more swamp cypress but anybody out there has any access to swamp cypress, try it, it's beautiful wood. So um, now in terms of wood that has you know, there's so many different things. You can get bicoloured wood, you can get streaky kind of wood, you can get ring porous wood. So um, these are two examples of ring porous wood. This one on the left is mulberry and this one on the, on the right is mulberry and the one on the left is chestnut, sweet chestnut and they've been rubbed, the grain has been rubbed after I've carved them, it's been rubbed with ground cinnamon and it just goes into the end grain and it, it sort of exaggerates the pattern of the wood. So that is a bit of a feather spoon with a, a raised central bit, this one is not. Um, but it's lovely, the, if you put that cinnamon over the whole thing, it just gives it a kind of lovely aged sort of pattern really. Um, I carve most of my spoons tangentially, so you get the rings here. Um, and woods that are very exaggerated with a lovely coloured heartwood or ring porous like that, you get a fantastic, um, it's almost like a peacock feather effect. So this is a mulberry spoon which I've just finished, which is, um, oh look, there's a knot with a hole in it now. <laughs> so um, it's quite pale, the heart the sapwood is pale and the heartwood is more yellow. Um, that one hasn't been burnished or oiled yet and I think that's going to be a second now because a little hole is developed where a knot was. Um, another really interesting wood, it came as a, a very small little long branch, is um, Mahonia which is a garden, a smallish garden shrub and when you carve it the wood is acid yellow. It's the most incredible colour. This is now about four months old or maybe even a bit more and it's it's deepened, the colour's deepened but it's still lovely and it's got these like three rings. I'm not quite sure why that happens. You've got the middle one here and then you've got the two on the sides. It's, it's obviously something to do with the way you're cutting through the grain but I still can't explain it. Um, just look there's one there and there's one there, it's very pretty. So that's, that's a lovely wood. Um, okay, I think these two are rowan. 
I've just got to double check that. Yeah, I th think that isn't Rowan. This is Rowan. I've done a few spoons in Rowan. I, I got some Rowan from John Mullaney at the Northern Bowl Gathering. And it's a kind of, I call it a piebald spoon. Um, and you get this incredibly dark heartwood and you can play with it to see where, you know, you're going to get the... I've, I've made some which are more like that half and half with Rowan, which is very easy to do, but that's not Rowan. I think that's apple. Pretty sure that's, that's apple. I mean, apple is a fruit wood. Rowan is, Rowan is not. It's mountain ash. So this one is also apple, um, which has got this lovely, lovely grain and it's probably a little bit spalted in the heartwood so that's why you get these dark patches in it. Um, a recent spoon is a very favoured wood and hard, a very very simple spoon actually is uh, blackthorn which I got when I went to the Tetbury Spoon Club. I think Dave Cockcroft bought this and it's just a dream. Always wanted to carve um, blackthorn. I've done it about twice that's all but it's hard to get um, blackthorn that's big enough, really. But it's lovely. The handle's a bit too big for the bowl, but I didn't want to lose any of that nice pattern, so I kept it like that. Um, this one, I think, is damson. It's probably damson. I do have a little bit of a problem with forgetting what I've carved, but I, it's definitely a fruit wood. Pretty sure it's damson with a bit of some kind of sporting in there and then because it's a very nice hardwood I could do this chip carving along the side it's just a very simple traditional design but it kind of lifts the spoon to something else you, you wouldn't want to do that with the soft wood but you can do it with the nice fruit wood um, this is um, field maple I think yeah pretty sure that's field maple which is a lovely lovely hardwood lovely colour. I mean some of the spoons I bake, some of them I just leave as they are and that one is just as it is. It's a kind of slightly curious spoon but I think someone will like it. It's got a very nice crank on it so it's probably a bent branch. Um, this is also, no this is not field maple, this is maple which is grown in Switzerland. It's a very very hard, I think it's another one there both of these. This one I don't know why it's more yellow than that one. Just a different part of the wood really. Um, lovely, lovely wood to carve. A real dream actually when it's fresh. So don't get that very often. Um, so what else? Um, this is an example. I think I had two of these. Yeah. This, I know these, I think they're beech. Yeah, it's spalted beech. You can see the medullary rays in there and all the little flecks here. Um, beech can be very, very plain uh, and a beautiful wood like that, or very often it has spalting in and spalted beech is really pretty beautiful. I, I'm really fond of those two. I think they've come out really nicely. That's just oiled, um, burnished and oiled. But the reason I think that it's got that dark colouring on it is that I put the blanks in the freezer. And sometimes when you carve blanks and you put them in the freezer and the wood could be a little bit boring. I mean, beach isn't boring, but if you've got a bit of a boring wood and you put it in the freezer, something happens to it. And it's, there's some kind of subtle changes. And sometimes the grain comes out, particularly in hazel actually, which is very white wood usually, although it's got lovely medullary rays as well. Uh, and it, it gets very figured when it's in, it's be, got to be there for a little while. That's interesting, so what, you carve it into a spoon blank? Is that yeah, and then I just put the blank in the freezer. Interesting. And uh, I, I didn't do it deliberately for that to happen, I just thought, oh, well that's interesting, that's happened, I'm going to do it again. Um, there's another very, very classic pocket spoon, quite a big one, that's beach, very, very simple beach, with the, with the rings here. Now, what else have we got? This one, I think is sycamore. And it's been really lightly baked. Sycamore sometimes has a tendency to 
develop kind of slightly green splodges or it's obviously some fungus in it and it, it looks a bit dirty not very nice and it might be that that was getting a bit dirty and I thought well I'll just deep yeah here I'll just sort of deepen it up in the oven and um, I think that's just about enough to have done in there. Here's a mulberry spoon which two here so mulberry starts off looking like that which is very beautiful in yellow and then it ends up after a while it goes this I mean still a lovely kind of sienna colour um, it gets much darker this is a different tree to this one but this is all heartwood the nice thing about mulberry is that it is a very knotty tree and the knots will carve into the spoon very nicely so they're fine unless it's very thin like here I've carved it, the knot there and then it's actually cracked open anyway use it as a sugar spoon or something now what else have we got? Oh, this is a funny, this is an oak spoon, it's a very funny story because I really wanted to um, ebonise it with an ebonising solution but I didn't have any. So I put it in the oven with a tray of carrots, I was going to roast some carrots and then I went and sat down, it's after midnight and I carved a spoon and then I sort of smelt this smell I thought, oh sh you know, I... <laughs> I've left it too long and I, I was worried more about the spoon than the carrots. Anyway, I opened the, opened the oven door and the carrots were just burnt to a frazzle. But the spoon was absolutely fine. <laughs> so, and it doesn't even seem that brittle actually. It seems fine. So I'm quite happy with that. So the carrots demise wasn't in vain. No, no. So yeah, anyway, now we know that oak is uh, more durable than carrots. <laughs> um, so here's a cherry spoon with some nice kind of blushes on it you know cherry is such a variable wood actually sometimes it can be amazing I love this kind of I don't know what it what it is whether that it is probably is a bit of sporting or staining or something it's a very simple spoon lovely to carve really enjoyed doing that one and uh, has a lovely finish to it so these two are probably pair well, I can't be sure. That might be sycamore. That might, because it's got this kind of lovely rippling that sycamore does and it's been baked. So sometimes when you bake things, you don't write yourself a note, you forget what it is. But, so it's light baking. I don't, I don't do it for very long. Not like the oak spoon and the carrots. Um, I can't remember what that is. But it's something unusual. I wonder if it's that before it's baked. I don't remember what it is. It could be a, a maple of some kind. This is another Pittisporum. Now, that baking I don't think was very successful because I don't like the colour. Because it was a very pretty spoon. So I think I might have to um, do something else to that. I could try baking it again and also it's shown up the kind of spoon marks, the spoon knife mark or the scorp marks on there which I'm not that keen on. But anyway it's an experiment using Pittisporum. This one is either peach or damson and the dark in it is actually sporting in the heartwood. But it's very, very nice wood, very kind of characterful wood. Here's a little plum spoon, sweet little spoon with a with an axed bit there that you know that'd be an axed out so I've just left that in but it's pretty it feels nice too it's an ideal size for taking on picnics and things um, another sported beach spoon kind of lovely shallow bowl I mean that's the that's the ideal to 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 manage that but yeah beach is always a favorite I know it's quite common but it's still a favorite and then I think this is hawthorn. Hawthorn I always think is like ivory or bone when you carve it. And it's very kind of variable. It's pretty. It's very rewarding to carve uh, hawthorn. Just down the lane there's somebody's cut a load of hawthorns and they've got them stacked up behind a fence and we can't get in there and I'm, obviously they're just going to let them rot so you know I've thought about going along with um, bolt cutters and cutting <laughs> better not. And then the last thing is, I mean, this is a, a spoon, spoon that's used, it's not, and uh, it probably is sported birch. 
and I know a lot of people go for that. Um, and that was quite a nice one. It's a little bit hit and miss getting that sporting, but you know, you don't want it to go any further than that because it gets soft. So sporting is a thing, and that's something you can actually create yourself by storing the wood. So that's, that is a bit of a variety. Have we done that one? That's probably pear again. It's definitely a fruit wood. I think it's pear. Pear is lovely. It's lovely to carve. It's very, very hard. So that's a sort of fair variety. There's a, there's a lot more. that I haven't got any holly spoons there at the moment. Um, but we can have a look at some wood and, you know, see what it looks like in the raw, really. So I've just set this tank up, actually, with Mick, my plot neighbour. Um, and it looks really disgusting after three days. It's actually full of mo uh, mosquito larvae. Um, so I'm going to, it's got a tap on the side so we can let that out and then we'll fill it up tonight and I think we should put a mesh cover on it and that should stop the problems but even with the mesh cover on we're going to actually have to, every few days we're going to have to change the water. But we've got a spoon club meeting tomorrow so hopefully quite a lot of it will be used. Um, so some of the, they're in the round, some of them, others that have been used and a bit's been put back. That one is... That's, that is rowan, yeah. So cherry, rowan, sycamore, mulberry, maple. Um, arbutus, arbutus. I think that's a cypress of some kind. And there's some more in the bottom. I'm not gonna put my hands in because I'm gonna smell too much. So, um, then I would cut them into slices like this and um, we could split a couple of these just to see what they look like. I mean, you know that's going to be beautiful, that's apple. It's just fabulous, isn't it? This one is a spalted beech. It's quite old, but it's got this lovely pattern, so I think that could be, it could be nice. It's not, you know, it's, it's hard, it'll be hard to axe. Um, this is the Pittisporum that I cut down from my garden and um, the spoons I made from a larger piece than this but it's just, it's a little bit like holly, a little bit like, you know, it's such dense grain so it'd be fantastic for chip carving. Um, mulberry is a lovely, it's just a lovely wood and you see the paleness of the yellow which eventually goes a bit darker and the pith, which you always need to cut through, the pith is, is, is not in the centre, so the wood would have been probably growing at an angle like that, the branch. So the weight of the wood would have been, you know, the, the, the pith would have been on the higher part. Um, so that's a nice one to split. Mulberry has this kind of habit of knitting itself together and not, not, not really liking to be split. But, I mean, this one was split last week. So you can you can very definitely see the the sapwood and the quite a lot of heartwood in that one actually and there is enough in that to make a nice a nice spoon but I might soak that for a while. Um, this is our butus, which is like no it's not <laughs> no it's not um, this is a cypress of some kind but yeah that's the arbutus. They're similar bark actually, um, but yeah, that's the cypress. But it's got a fantastic, um, got fantastic rings on there. There's a knot there, but we could probably get something out from the side. I'm not sure what condition that's in because it's been around for a long time. Um, so I'm because this is my favourite wood, the arbutus, and I've still got quite a bit of it left. I'm actually going to, I'm going to try and split it. It's, it's, um, I'm going to split it across there, I think. It could be difficult, so, um, bear with me. We can get this. There we are. Look at that, perfect down the middle. Now, it has got a lot of staining, because it's been in the pond, which is a shame but I think 
Um, so there's a knot, there's a funny thing going on there, just a kink in the way it grew I think, so I'll probably get three out of that, that piece. So I'll just... Yeah, really nice. And I'm going to take, oh look, it's even got a, so I'm going to make a spoon out of that. So that's great. So I've got, and I'll put those in the freezer, I think, because I can't, I can't get them done that quickly. Um, okay, so let's do something exciting. Is that the same as that? I think, I don't know what this is, and I'm very, very curious, so... Um, I like finding wood and thinking, could that be a lovely surprise like the, that lovely feather spoon I made? Ooh. Very fibrous. Don't really... Don't know. I've no idea how that's going to be, but that could be interesting. I'm going to try it anyway. It's very linear, isn't it? That kind of... You can almost see the cells coming up. Yeah, so that's... That's interesting. Um, this is a piece of very, very pretty birch. And I love the way it... Birch often does that, grows like this, like a heart, isn't it? Um, yeah, so we do that side. Not quite sure where, where I should cut this. If I do that. Hmm. This would be a great thing for th three three axes, you know, at once. Uh, I think I'll cut it like that. Through the pith. It's very clean, but nonetheless, if you if you make a tangential spoon, you will get some nice rays. I mean, birch is not brilliant. I, I don't find it very interesting, but um, it's nice occasionally to have an easy easy wood to carve, and it's it is quite easy. Apparently, birch that grows in um, Scandinavia is very different to to this birch. So I think this is much softer here. So. Yeah. So a question for you, okay, you you have some wood there in the water um, and you obviously have some wood out here. So for example, when you've procured wood, let's say from a tree surgeon, which is typically where a lot of it comes from in the UK, Yeah. Um, what is your process for kind of generally the storing of well, the, the wood? Well, the best thing is to store it, just to st store it in the shade in, in the round. And, and some people do that, keep it up for up to six months. I think Rachel Bainton does that and it's perfectly fine. Um, some people paint the ends. I've never done that, actually. I just cut the ends off. Um, don't seem to have trouble getting wood, but, um, yeah, but then if I, if I can get a sort of flow going and make a load of blanks, I will then put them in the freezer. I prefer that to putting it in the tank because you've always got the risk that the kind of rates of drying is going to make it crack and uh, difficult in the summer you know to go from wet to carve in a dry sunny place it's it's complicated I mean I'm not I'm not a technical expert on all that but there are other people who are um, but I think generally storing the blanks is the important thing um, and then obviously you get we've got a load of wood that's just been lying around for so long that um, it's very, very dry and we don't use it anymore. I am quite keen to open this up for you because I love mulberry. Um, it's a favourite tree and it's probably the nicest fruit in the world. And it's coming up to the season now. Uh, just so, so I'm going to get that. There is a bit of checking here, so I'm going to go along the line that it's already started to check in through the mm. through the um, pith 
Mulberry doesn't like being split. Certain woods knit together. Uh, London Plain is another one. Oh. You're getting a workout today, Deborah. I know. It actually, it's not bad. Look at that. Oh, it's just beautiful. Love that wood. That that's going to be fabulous spoon. Yeah, I'll we'll take that bit off there. So that's really. I mean, it's. I used to think the mulberry was a, a rare tree, but I've seen people seem to have a lot of it. It's a bit. I mean, this this came from. Um, I think this came from Tetbury, but in fact, I've got a whole load of mulberry over there. When I was driving through a street in St John's Wood. And some guys had just piled it up on the side of the road and I just knew it was mulberry by the bark. Stopped and apparently um, someone was having an extension built so cut down a kind of 200 year old tree. And it does seem a bit sad really because it's the most wonderful tree. So yeah, that's a favourite. That's a real favourite. Um, the, the beach will be very, very difficult to do. Um, Rowan, I think that might be okay to split. Rowan is lovely. It's a bit like wal black walnut has that centre, doesn't it? Um, it's very smelly at the moment. But we could just split that and see what it's like when it's fresh. I mean, I really love that kind of this, this, um, this is the thing I love. When we split it and you just do that, you think, wow, isn't that lovely? So that one's probably only been down a couple of weeks. It's pretty good, that one. And um, I can just do this, just see what the rowan is like. This rowan is not an uncommon wood, but you don't see it often used. This one comes from Yorkshire. pretty nice isn't it mm. yeah lovely um, yeah so that will be I mean I'll cut that in half cut the ends off either end so there's a few pocket spoons there so that's the kind of that's one of the nicest things about spoon carving is, is opening up some opening up some wood and seeing what seeing what's inside it it's always exciting, and I think when you don't, when you're, when you're not um, a tree surgeon and you you haven't really cut wood and split it like this before, you don't really know what's um, in wood, and it's always a revelation, especially some of the garden shrubs, you know, which I'd, who'd have known that arbutus was such a fantastic wood. So what I'll probably do now is the ones that I've split, I'll make into blanks, I'll wrap them in plastic, and I'll put them in the freezer. And then I'll just pick, take one out every night and have a go. This is nice, this is sycamore. Don't really often use sycamore, but we've just got some lovely bits. Um, holly is, um, I've got some holly over there. Holly's lovely because, um, apart from the annoying thing that it, it, it colours, although I think it only colours when the sap's up and it's cut. If you cut it when the sap is down, I don't think it colours in the same way. Um, but it, anyway, it's the one wood that you can cook in the oven for quite a long time and it's very, very stable. It's brilliant for chip carving and it's brilliant for any kind of fine detail carving. I mean, I'm not a brilliant carver. I'm not a brilliant, I mean, I can do chip carving, but there's lots of things I can't do. But I think holly would be one of the desired woods for that. So, there we are. Oh, was that you? It's fine. Your allotment. So, so there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Deborah, thank you so much.
pleasure. It's that, great. Fun. That was really, really informative. Oh, good. Um, like we explained at the beginning of this video, it was more of a talk through about the different varieties of woods that Deborah has carved with. And even this, I would say, is obviously not the full range, is it? There's a oh, lot no, more no. woods. I mean, obviously one doesn't have the whole range at all times. <laughs> I mean, you just have to wait till it comes. And this is what we've got at the moment. Um, some of it's quite dry, but a fair bit is actually still very usable. Yeah. Yeah. But well, thank you once again for talking us through that. The general idea with this video is like I said, in the first video that I filmed with Deborah, which was a very detailed how to carve a spoon video, we spent a spe segment of that talking through a few wood varieties and that proved to be a very popular segment. Oh, great. Of yeah. that video. Yeah. Um, and so that for, you know, therefore we inspired to kind of do this video where it's a bit more extensive and kind of dedicated to just the wood varieties of its own accord. Just to kind of wrap up, this is something I know we've spoken about generally off camera, um, but obviously your encouragement to people in general is to, to play around with different wood varieties. Oh, and right. Yeah, absolutely. Just try everything. I try everything. Um, because you just learn, you'll just learn about wood. So, you know, what's to, lo what's to lose? I mean, you might find that this wood's not very nice and you'll never car carve again, but you haven't lost anything. Yeah. And there are a few woods that I probably, you know, feel that about like poplar or something. But, um, you know, it was good to learn on. Yeah, and just lastly, just a brief touch on, because this is a topic I'm gonna to cover in a separate dedicated video. But in terms of your wood, um, a couple of quick things. This is something I believe you mentioned to me a while ago um, and a couple of people in that when you're in places like city urbanised areas, especially places like London, you actually get more of a variety. You get more variety because you've got garden wood. I mean, London right. is like a garden city, isn't it? Everybody's got gardens in yeah. London and everybody grows shrubs and trees and sometimes they get too big and they have them cut down. <laughs> especially in our bit of North London, there's a lot of tree surgeons that work the whole time. And so, yeah, it's, you know, when you're interested in wood, it just comes to you. I don't know how, I mean, sometimes I see it, sometimes I'll stop someone on the street. Uh, obviously, Ryan is a tree surgeon, so he brings stuff here and that's, that, or he'll let us know when he's cutting something interesting down. Um, but yeah, and various visiting people, swapping, doing swaps, and that's great. Ellie's coming tomorrow and she's bringing some apple and she'll obviously take some stuff, you know, we've got so much stuff here. Yeah, but this leads on to the second kind of point and that is summer once again I'll cover in a dedicated video, but that is actually the procuring of the wood to make friends with tree surgeons, to, if you're, if it's feasible in terms of where you live, to attend spoon carving meetups, green woodworking meetups. Yeah, very important, yeah. Th things of that nature and also to connect with people through Facebook groups uh, and things of that nature, depending on kind of where you live, your locality, your country, there's bound to be be someone at least who knows people and yeah and keep your ears open for the chainsaw that's it because I, you I, often can't see what they're doing but you can hear it first I, I always say like the chainsaw signal is like the batman signal for woodcarvers <laughs> yes. honestly the moment i hear <laughs> i see it i prick up like a meerkat you know <laughs> exactly yeah exactly <laughs> and like scouting down like where they are but yeah but yeah that's a very good point but yeah this is something i want to cover on a separate video about how to actually source green wood is something i get asked all the time you know, so yeah, it's. I think when you're interested in something, you will find it. It'll, yeah. it you will find it. You've just got to have that. You've got to have your ears, you know, like that, and you've got to have your eyes open, and you just got to have a good nose for it, and you will find it. Yeah. On that note, Deborah, thank you once again for taking the time out Pleasure. and for allowing me into your space in this beautiful allotment. We spoke off camera, and we hopefully want to do at some point when it's convenient next to do a dedicated video just on the allotment. It's amazing the work you've done here and uh, another allotment here, uh, Mike Rand, who's also doing some amazing stuff. So it'll be awesome to kind of do another video. Yeah, that would be uh, great. Um, joint, joint allotment, green woodworking sort of set up. Yeah, yeah. because this is where uh, Deborah also hosts a spoon club as well uh, for this part of London. So there's a lot of activity going on here, but it'll be another video for another time, hopefully very soon. So on that note, Deborah, I really do appreciate it once again, allowing me into your space and to record this video. Um, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. As I mentioned at the very beginning, I've filmed uh, previous videos with Deborah that have been very well received, some very detailed tutorials on all aspects of spoon carving. Links to all of those videos will be down below in the description. I'll also put in a link to Deborah's website. You can find out more about the work that she sells. And also finally, I'll put a link to Deborah's Instagram. It mean the world to me, gain any value from this video whatsoever than to give her a follow uh, on Instagram. You can see the myriad of things that she's gotten up to in the past and also currently. So as always, 
I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. From myself, Zed Outdoors, and Deborah Schneebly Morell, peace out. Peace out.